Welcome back. If all you're interested in is seeing uh, this carbon fiber test, um, then skip to about the five minute mark. So over the weekend, I was working on uh, getting the toolpaths ready for um, some of the last remaining uh, platforms that we're going to have now to create molds from. And this is the first one. So this is uh, one of the baggage doors. And um, this is what it looks like when you actually mirror them. So left and right and create a single platform for those ones. So that's now ready uh, to go. And the next one up is the outlet door um, for the cowling to let the sort of hot air out from underneath the engine. So this is what the part is going to look like. And this is uh, what the uh, plug is going to look like with all the flanges added. So the guys aren't ready to create the uh, platforms for these yet, but I figured I'd get sort of a, a jump on them uh, by getting this stuff done over the weekends when I can. And next up, this is uh, one of the main gear doors, and this is basically kind of three pieces really. You have the lower piece there that sort of folds back onto the other piece when the gear is um, retracted, or actually gear is extended, sorry, and then you've got the lower piece there that sort of uh, meets up with the fuselage, and you'll see more on that later. But these two surfaces there, they kind of uh, end up sort of pushing up against each other when the gear door opens up, because you can't just have that um, staying in one piece there because it would be dragging on the ground because of the geometry of the gear. And this is what the platform is going to look like. So basically sort of bent that one bit that um, goes on the lower fuselage there and ultimately you know we'll just be putting a cut across there because that is a, se a separate piece. And next up is the parachute strap covers that um, basically fill in those channels on the roof of the aircraft that you've seen before. So uh, and these are just going to be some thin carbon fiber that will just be bonded into place probably just with some silicon or some type of lightweight glue so if they ever deploy the parachute they'll just um, get sort of ejected when the straps come out from um, the roof of the aircraft. So back in the shop on Monday I was working on a few different things. Um, so this is the throttle um, control that we've got directly out of an Audi car and I've cut the actual um, the foot pedal off of that and made this little bracket here that's going to be bolted on there with some hardware um, that I've got coming from Spruce and uh, so then that basically levers like that it doesn't have a lot of uh, throw in it and then there'll be um, one of these rod ends on there and then a short little rod and then that'll go to um, the throttle control handle so right there it'll sort of go to that hole that you're looking at there so that's how that's all gonna operate and just got to get the rest of the hardware in that but pretty much uh, it's nothing really complicated getting that sorted out and you know a little bit of geometry in SolidWorks was told me exactly where I needed to have everything so the throws match. And last time you may remember that I had bonded these sort of uh, hard points and these uh, little studs into place inside the fuselage for where all the different things are going to mount to there uh, behind the glare shield. So now I've gone and uh, done the layups over those and it's just um, a single layer of the, our medium weight uh, carbon fiber there and some peel ply on those to sort of keep it neat and tidy. And the yellow stuff there is a bit of heat shrink that I put over the threads so it didn't, and none of the threads got resin on them uh, by accident, and that all came off uh, cleanly afterwards. And here's how it looks with the peel ply removed, and you can see there's a four there that that I've just added since then because uh, I completely forgot that I needed to mount the um, little studs there for the pressurization controller. So anyway, we'll do a layup over those later on. Uh, but everything else is pretty much done, so I've got hard points um, now for you know things like the Adahars, which is there, and autopilot servo, and um, braces, and things like the throttle control, and the and the um, braking um, adjustment there for the anti-lock. And a stroke of luck today when Jeff uh, found this bit of 4130 square tube, um, which you know odd size, one and a quarter inch um, square. And it's something I ordered a long time ago, and it was for these door locks, and I couldn't find any online recently when I was looking. So I don't know if you remember, I'd actually cut some uh, flat stock to have Brit weld up, and that was going to be time consuming. But fortunately, having found this, I quickly got on it and uh, got on the machine because I got to drill and machine these things. Uh, Zach helped me cut them up, and uh, you'll see more on that shortly. And Devon's on vacation this week, so Zach is our go-to guy for uh, working on the plugs. And so this is the leading edge spar plug, and he's pretty much got this one done now. Uh, just a little bit more sanding to go. This is already on the second go-round, and so uh, it won't be long, and I'll be waxing it. 
Okay, so on to the carbon fiber testing. Uh, Mark had wanted us to um, do a different example than what we did last time, because last time we had done um, checking bond strength between the carbon fiber and the uh, acrylic glass that we're using, um, using sort of peels and T peels and shears um, with the high sole bonding. So this time um, it's basically an AN4 bolt, which is a quarter inch diameter, going through uh, that piece of carbon fiber that has sort of like an L shape to it. So it's drilled through on that side and then the basically the side of the carbon fiber goes up next to the bolt. And uh, Mark wanted to see how much uh, force that can handle before it starts to stretch or tear away or just deform or whatever or even break um, in order to, so he knew and actually had some real numbers um, on how much uh, force the door lock design that we have uh, can handle with respect to things like the pressurization so he was looking for um, about 380 pounds is what he'd been sort of uh, calculating with from numbers that he'd used in the past or found on the internet or whatever um, so anyway, Jeff basically set up our whole load cell again, and as you can see, he's got that bolt running through there, and he's just putting um, a couple of bits of supports in there just to prevent the whole thing from kind of wanting to roll because the force is on the bottom of that um, that bolt right now, and it's wanting to kind of twist um, in a sort of ro uh, clockwise position from the camera here from the bottom of that bolt. So now that it's pretty much supported, uh, we're going to crank up um, the load there. And as you can see, we're already over what Mark was looking for, 450 pounds there. And you know, Mark was looking to see if it was going to sort of um, elongate the hole or if it was going to just give way or stretch out or whatever. But uh, anyway, so this is how we've done it before in the past, just with a load cell using a jack um, just to sort of stretch out that chain there. And as you can see, getting up to 600 pounds there. And everything's looking pretty good. It's starting to get um, a little bit of um, sort of flexing in that carbon fiber there, but uh, nothing, you know, um, where it looks like it's going to give way. And I was just looking at Jeff saying, man, it's going to take a lot more than that to make that deform. Um, and anyway, what's interesting is this this is just um, fresh carbon fiber. It was only laid up last week um, using one of our door molds. Um, and it hasn't been post cured yet, so which makes it you know way stronger when you um, bake it. Which you know ultimately that's what we're going to be doing for everything. Uh, but as you can see there, up to uh, almost 800 pounds of force there. And what's happening here now is the way Jeff's got it clamped here. It's looking like it's possibly going to come off the clamps there. So um, we decided that um, it was going to be okay just to put it back through the holes the way we had it in the last times we did the test way back when. And even though you can't sort of see the pin as much, uh, this way we can just put the full force on there. So behind there is the metal braces that the um, carbon has bolted to with three different bolts. And uh, this way there's not going to be any rolling or anything like that. We we'll just go for it. So as you can see here, I'll let you uh, watch it for a little bit and we'll see how it turns out. We're going to go a thousand easy. And as you can see, it's getting way up there beyond what Mark had looked for. And ultimately, it went just over 1,400 pounds there before it gave way. And this is kind of what it looked like there. So it just sort of pulled through there like you'd expect eventually. Um, so it's pretty impressive, and Mark's super happy with the outcome there. So needless to say, I don't think we have any worries about our locks holding the pressurization. And back to the locks here. So I got all the holes drilled. Um, for the upper and lower half sides of those things and now I've got to machine out some larger holes um, on the sides and also machine out that opening that you can see there so that'll be tomorrow's effort anyway that's your update for the first half of this week and thanks again for watching